Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get going. It's, uh, it's 8 a.m. and we have a good crowd of folks online, so I want to make the best use of everyone's time. Um, welcome everyone to Think Data Thursday. Today we're going to be talking about uh, uh, Tableau. How did I not know that? It's a, a list of some tips and tricks. Um, and this, uh, this subject came up during or as a result of a, of a previous Think Data Thursday. Um, and I believe it was Craig Bloodworth who had on screen made uh, the calculation window text uh, font larger than the rest of the view, and um, after that, uh, after that presentation, people were asking, "How did you do that?" And uh, and so a number of tips for working with Tableau uh, were passed around amongst uh, the the Tableau Zen masters, and a presentation for I think Data Thursday came together as a result of of that. Um, so today with us to help share uh, the, the compiled list of, of tips is uh, we have three of our three of our Zen masters. We have Sean Walwork, and uh, Sean is is well known in the community forums. He uh, came to Tableau from the advertising industry, and back in 2011, he was asked to uh, let me and I'll done bring this over to the screen so you can see their pretty faces. Um, he was asked to make sense of the mountains of data that needed to be analyzed. Uh, to make informed planning buying decisions. Uh, that's when he discovered Tableau. It was love at first sight. Um, Sean became immediately addicted to Tableau, and when he discovered the wonderful people in Tableau forums, he was hooked for the hook for life. Sean currently offers his services and experience as an independent consultant through his company, Walks Lightly LLC. Uh, then we have Peter Gilks with us, and Peter is a data visualization and discovery consultant uh, at Solemn Consulting in New York where he helps his clients unlock the potential of Tableau. After discovering Tableau in 2009, when a customer insight analyst, when, <clears throat> when as a customer insight analyst, he fell in love with the way it could quickly bring data stories to life in creative and engaging ways. After experiencing how Tableau transformed his work, he now has the pleasure of bringing that experience to others through his consulting with Solemn. Peter also runs his own blog, where he provides tips and tricks and lets his creative juices flow via Tableau public visualizations on a variety of topics. And you can see I have the, um, the websites here as well on screen. And then we have Steve Wexler, and Steve is the founder of Data Revelations, a data visualization consultancy that helps organize uh, better organizations better understand and share data. Steve was the winner of the Strata O'Reilly Data Visualization Competition and the inaugural Tableau Iron Viz Competition. Um, Steve, you might have to tell us what year that was. But uh, Steve enjoys an active, active, active following within the data visualization community with his blog posts reaching tens of thousands of unique users every year. Steve is also a Tableau training partner and is responsible for training hundreds of Tableau users each year. Uh, when not consulting or training, Steve leads and plays bass for the Top Shelf, one of the top Motown R&B bands in New York City. Uh, and that's available at stevewexlermusic.com, and I highly recommend checking it out. I, I was on there last night. So um, to get going, uh, we were going to have Sean start this morning and, and share his, uh, his tips with us first. So I've gone ahead and unmuted Sean, and uh, I'm going to pass over the presenter role to you. Good morning, Sean. Good morning. Now all I've got to do is figure out how to share my screen. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, so... Share screen two. You see me yet? Yeah, we're coming up here. Right now it's a black screen, but it's coming up. There Excellent. we go. <coughs> Sorry about that. OK, these will be just fairly quick tips. It's um, a lot of little things that um, make our lives easier once we learn them. Um, the first tip on my list is how to copy fields. It's simply a matter of control, drag, drop. This is real good for um, when you want to add a table calculation to a, a field you've already got out there. So yeah, it's just a real straightforward um, control drag. Ooh. It's fine. Um, and then the next one, my next tip on the list is that creating a font size. So let's take this calculation. That was control A, control C. Right click, and we'll go here, paste it in there. And as you can see now, if I use the control key and the scroll wheel, I can make the font sizes bigger. And this is actually the trick that, as Patrick said, instigated this whole thing. 
that we're doing this morning. Um, the other, another, the next tip is that you can highlight a portion of a of a, a calculation and drag it directly onto the shelf so that you can test. You know, well, what's this going to return to me, and then what's this portion going to return to me, and so. Um, and it doesn't even have to be control drag, it's just drag it out there. Um, let's see, now we're going to go to color picker. Okay, let's get rid of this guy. Um, the, hmm. oh, I guess I, I thought I had it set up. Oh, no, here it is, right there. Okay, so um, you, there's two ways to get to a color picker. One of them is double click, and then they double click again and you'll get into the color picker, the new one in 9.0, um, which is a, a great, great new improvement to the product. Um, the other way to get in is, of course, and it's the way I'm going to do this morning, is go in this way and then double click again. Um, that double click I didn't learn until I'd been using Tableau for a year. I didn't realize there was this whole box that we could get to. Um, now within this box, they have, they have my favorite tool, which is the color picker. And so you can use this to pick colors anywhere in Tableau. But the really, really nice thing is, is that you can also go to a web page that has your client's logo on it or whatever and, and pick colors from the web page. The cursor changes to a different mode, but it doesn't matter. It still will pick that color. So let's pick that one. And then the ne next tip is that we can drag these now from one square over to the other to get our custom color list. You can actually drag from here as well. Um, so that then, this is a, a nice easy way to create a um, color palette for a particular viz, and then you're able to um, pick it you know, for all the different marks and stuff that you're using. The one note of warning is is that when I close this um, um, workbook down and then reopen it, the um, custom colors are all lost. So that's, but that is an idea I put on the form. So if you want to vote for that, please do. Um, let's see, where are we? Color. Uh, my next tip is right, right, right click everything. Um, you get, you get all, you can get all your context menus depending on what you click. The context menu changes. Um, I tend to, you know, click a white space to get this context menu, so I can get directly at the create. Um, um, I'm sorry, create the um, calculated field. It's hidden over here. Um, you can click color to be able to do different things there. You can click uh, right click the marks. I don't end up spending hardly any time up here. I think I do anal analysis, you know, sometimes I'll do format at the beginning of a workbook, but generally I'm right clicking everything. Uh, let's see, the next one is, um, oh, this is another one of my favorites. Um, it is uh, changing filters in mass. And so we've got these quick filter, and let's go over here. Um, so you can click and highlight shift to highlight a whole group, and then you only have to click one. Oops, sorry about that. To highlight a whole group, and then you only have to click one of them, and they will all come undone. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can click uh, highlight a group, and then um, uh, control click a couple of them that you don't want to take out and then that leaves those two guys. So control to do single selection of, and uh, shift to do multiple selections. Um, keeps you from having to click every single little box. I encourage you to train your users to do that. It'll, it'll shorten their um, time on Tableau and make them a uh, little less frustrated with all, clicking all these little boxes. Um, let's see, create and reorder a parameter. So we can create a parameter. That was a right click, by the way. Um, we're going to go to string, and we're going to do a list. Let's populate the list from subcategory. And uh, the, that's all pretty straightforward stuff. But here's the trick is, is that you can now um, reorder 
your parameters, how they display by dragging them to different positions in the um, in this value box. And then when we click OK and we say show parameter, you'll see they're all in the order that we put them to put them in in the box. Um, my next one. My next one is move shelves. Um, a lot of times we'll end up with something where you've got so many pills on a shelf, you end up going off the end, or they get truncated so small that you can't read what they are. Um, you can use, you end up using these little things. Instead of that, it's just so so easy and quick to just go ahead and move the shelf so that it's up and down, easy to read, and you know I, you can move almost any, or you can move any any of the shelves around, reorder them however you would want to. Um, the only thing you can't move is the viz, but it resizes itself depending on how you lay out the shelves. Um, so let's go. And then I think the last one is this one. Let's clear this. So control click, control click, and control click to obviously to get all of those guys. Then we're going to go um, bullet chart. Now this this trip tip has to do with um, being able to swap the reference lines. You see, when you do a show me, Tableau takes a guess at where, what order you want things in, but sometimes it doesn't you know come out the way you want it to. So swap uh, reference lines, and then um, in this case switch these two pills, and that's it for me. Well, thanks, John. That's great. Um, Next up is uh, is Pierre, and, and I'm going to change him to presenter. And Pierre, you're on. You're also uh, not muted anymore. There you go. Okay, thanks. All right, let me share my screen. See if this works. Great. Okay. So I think mean, one of the, the purposes of this um, session. You know, to learn these things which, even if you've been using Tableau for years, there's always something new. And uh, even though we've actually gone through this <laughs> in planning this session, some of the things that um, Sean just showed in terms of the color picker are actually new news to me as well. So um, thanks, Sean. I'm going to go and use some of those there. Um, so that's great. Um, I, and I've been using Tableau for uh, about five years now. and the new things come out with the product, which um, product changes quite frequently. There's new additions, and you may not know about all the new additions, but there are also things that have been around for a long time in Tableau, which if you never use them, you might not know they're there, because often some of the things that Tableau does are very powerful, but they can be quite subtle in the way that they're presented. So I'm hoping that some of these are going to kind of uh, highlight to at least a few of these and some things you didn't know before. So the first one that I'm going to go through is uh, about sales suite. So I'm going to use um, the Superstore sales data here. And let's say I'm looking at sales by customer name. Now, I may have a list of customers that I'm interested in, but those list of customers don't fall into any particular bucket and dimension that I already have in place. So they're not in any state or city. They're just a, a list of customers. Um, so no, the the more obvious way to do this would be to like go from customer name to filters and go and choose each one individually and find them all in the list or type them in individually. See see who I'm trying to get. That could take an awful long time. So what I'm going to do instead is I've got the list of customers I'm interested here in this Excel sheet. Just a random list of people, and what I can actually do is just copy. So I'll highlight these guys, copy that list, drag customer name into filters, and then I can use this custom value list. So even though this text box is very small, and it looks like you can only enter one line, you can actually enter multiple lines. So if I just hit Control-V, you'll see all my names from the Excel sheet have appeared. And if I hit OK with any look, we'll see that that filters down to that list. So let me just quickly show you that again. I uh, first of all have my list of customers. I just copied them from Excel. 
I used the custom name filter, chose custom value list, and then just pasted using Control V into this uh, line. So I don't think it's obvious that you can that you can paste multiple values into that line. So I think that's a good thing to know. Um, and I say okay, so that's a nice quick way to filter um, things from from long lists. Okay, the, the next one I have on my list, uh, Sean actually did the demo um, as part of one of his other ones, but I'll just show it again anyway. Um, let's say we're looking at a calculation, um, like profit ratio in this example. And in my calculation, I have um, sum of profit divided by sum of sales. Um, and I have sum of profit, profit ratio on screen. I might actually want to show the sum of profits on the screen, but I don't want to leave this window. I, I don't want to leave the calculation editor. So I can just highlight um, the bit I'm interested in, some profit, and just drag that into columns, and it appears. So you don't even need to hold control or right click or anything. It's just simple left mouse drag and drop for each element from here. So you can do that on the screen, which is pretty nifty, and you don't have to leave the calculation editor. Next one I'm going to show you is uh, something to do with dashboards. So you'll probably be aware by now of, of the different ways that um, uh, tiles um, and visas and legends and filters can be applied to a dashboard, which is either the tile view, uh, where you, know, you throw things in and put them in a tile, or the floating view, where you choose something and you get some put it exactly where you want. What you may not know is that once you've done that, you can change. So uh, one way to change is to, to click on this small button at the top and say make it floating. So I'm going to take this legend and say floating and move it around. Take back. But another way to do it, even an even shorter shortcut, is to hold down the shift button. So I'm holding down shift on my keyboard right now, and when I grab the sales legend, it automatically comes to floating. And if I do the same thing in reverse, hold down shift and move, you'll see it now gives me the timing options. So that is a nice, um, quick way to move things around on your dashboard. Yes, that's what Jackson takes one. <coughs> yes, it's pretty neat. All right. So the next one I'm going to show you um, is uh, called Replace References. And I'm pretty embarrassed to say I think this has been in the product ever since I started using it. And I didn't know about it until a few months ago. And a few people on Twitter mercifully mocked me for it. Um, if I'd known about this a few years ago, I could have saved myself, myself hours of work. Um, but anyway, it works like this. So Let's say we are looking at uh, sales by country in uh, this view here. And over here, I've got a map, which is looking, uh, again, sales by country, but it's in a map view. Now, I suddenly, let's say I've been told by my boss that um, looking at sales by country is very interesting, and they want to look at sales by city. So I could do that by going through every um, location where I have country and replacing it with city, like this. And like this. It's going to take a while. But there is a better way to do it. Let's put country back in. The simple way to do this, you want to replace it in across multiple sheets. And even within calculations, um, uh, you can click on the field you want to replace, and hit Replace References, and then choose the field you want to replace it with. So I'm going to choose City. And it, you'll see it's replaced it here, and also replaced it on my map. So that's a pretty cool feature, and um, that can come in really useful if you um, are attaching to a new data source, and maybe the, the names of the fields don't add up quite right. 
or maybe you can give it a new field which needs to replace everything that's already existing. Um, you can do that in one fell swoop without having to go into each sheet and replace and see what the impact is. So I find that one really useful. I'm sure everybody else knows about that already, but maybe it's just me who didn't. All right, so the next one I'm going to talk about is um, something to do with formatting. So <coughs> formatting in Tableau can be quite uh, arduous. Um, you know, there's so many ways to access the formatting page. You can right click on different uh, elements within the view. You can right click on axes. You can click on fields to go into format. You can click on the fields themselves in, in the uh, mentions and dimensions. Dimensions, measures and dimensions. Sorry, um, and it can get a bit, a little bit confusing to remember what you're looking at exactly. Am I looking at the header or the page, and which field am I looking at? So one small tip is, um, let's say I, you know, right click here and I go into format. To understand what I'm exactly formatting, I can actually switch between some of my fields. So if I want to switch my uh, sum of sales which is, a, is the bar chart on here. And maybe I want to change um, you know, the font in the header to red and make that in thousands. I can do that here. And then if I want to switch over to profits, but I don't want to have to like, come out here and, and right click and then hope that I've chosen the right element, I can use this field drop down and switch from some sales to some profits. And then I'm going to do the same thing over this side. I'm going to make this one yellow instead. And maybe make it much bigger so you can see. And the same applies for all the different you know, um, functionality within formatting. Um, size, shading, borders, etc. It all goes on there. So it's nice and quick and easy. And you have both your measures and your dimension fields here that you can switch between, um, which I find um, pretty useful because I, I do think the formatting can get a little bit confusing once you've got a lot going on on the street. So I recommend using that one. OK, so the next one I'm going to show is uh, some of your own dashboards. So here is the world's most beautiful dashboard. Um, I'm sure you're all amazed by the visual prowess. Um, so what I've actually done is built some um, filters into this dashboard. So this sheet that the tree map is a, um, uses a filter, so it's a dashboard action. And I believe so is uh, maybe a map. The map is as well. So <coughs> as you know in Tableau Server that there is a kind of reverse button to get rid of action that doesn't exist in Tableau Desktop. Um, one of my wishes is, is that it would exist or that Tableau would build a remove all actions button across your worksheet. But there is really something you can do to, to do things quickly. So let's say I've made a few action choices. If I choose technology, then obviously I can unclick technology to uh, get the action out. But if I click a couple of actions, let me uh, do my selector. How do you do that these days? So I filtered both on technology and on uh, these a range of cities here. If I can hit the escape key on my keyboard, it removes both those actions in one go. So this only works on Tableau Desktop. It only works, you know, it doesn't go beyond save like undo does. So you have to kind of only do it really in the flow. But if you're doing a demo, say, and you don't want to have to go and unclick all your actions, uh, or if you even forget which actions you've pressed, uh, and you want to make sure they're clear, um, maybe the ahead of publishing to a server, using the escape key is really useful for that. So again, I click something here. I'm going to make some choices here to filter. And I just hit escape on my keyboard, and they're clear. All right, so the last one coming up from me was something, um, again, I didn't know about, but, but now I do, and I'm very happy about it. So let's say I've got a view of um, <coughs> cities. Actually, I'm going to make these countries so it's easier to see. Um, 
countries by sales and profit. Now, there are very ways you can sort data in Tableau. I'm sure you'll know about the sort key down here, the sort keys on the menu bar, and you can sort within a field. Um, I often use the ones at the top. I just find them <coughs> most intuitive. But you'll see the up and down fields here are, are automatically going to filter the, um, the first measure on the column shelf. So one thing I can do with, as an alternative to this is if I click on my dimension and hold control and click on a measure, the time profit, and then hit the uh, sort key, it will sort it by that measure. It's pretty nifty. And this is more useful when you're bringing in uh, further dimensions. So here I have um, country and state and sales and profits. So if I do country by sales and then hit descending, it brings France to the top because France has the uh, highest overall um, sales. If I hold, click state, hold control and hit sales, and then do the same thing, you see now I've activated within country sorting by state. So I managed to, first of all, overall sort by country, and then within state, um, sort by sales of state. So I think that's a really um, nice uh, way to do sorting. It makes sense, it's easy to follow, um, and if, especially if you've got situations with multiple dimensions and you want to get that sort order just right, or you've got multiple measures. Um, so I might want to sort country by sales, or sort state by profit, I can do that as well. Uh, so there you go. That's uh, the end of my tips and tricks. That's great, Peter. I think this uh, this last one, especially, is one that uh, would have saved me many many challenging moments. Um, okay. Uh, last up, we have Steve. Looks like Steve, you've already unmuted yourself. I'll go ahead and change you to be presenter. Hey, Patrick. Thank you. Let me see if I can get the uh, sharing working here. And let me know if you can see my screen. Coming up. There we go. You're all good. Fantastic. Um, he would ask, oops, that's not what I wanted to show. There we go. He would ask uh, when that inaugural uh, Iron Viz competition was. That would have been 1952. And uh, we only were allowed to use two colors at the time, so it was pretty <laughs> tough. Uh, but, uh, white, white and black. I guess those aren't colors. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> exactly. It was color and lack of color. Um, so um, let me uh, show you a handful of things, some of which I knew and many of which uh, I didn't and had the reaction, how did I not know that this was in the product? Um, I think a lot of us have that same thing. Uh, here is one that I, in fact, did know about um, because at some point I was browsing through all the shortcut keys that are in Tableau. Uh, I probably use five or six of them, but uh, in this case, it's just resizing a view. And uh, with a bar chart, it's odd, but the you know the wider the bar chart, the harder it is to kind of grok. So you know, I'll go here and I'll try to make it narrower, and I'm kind of stuck. Um, because of uh, it's thinking I'm resizing the quick filters and not the size of the viz. So eventually, you know, I can go here and try to, oh, I'm still getting stuck. This kind of drives me nuts. Um, control left and right arrow and control up and down arrow. So if I do control left arrow, it makes the chart narrower. Control right arrow makes it wider. Control up arrow makes it taller. Control down arrow makes it smaller. Uh, extremely useful shortcut keys right up there with uh, control Z for undo and control S for saving. Uh, sorry for the Mac zealots uh, that I'm using uh, control keys as opposed to the functional equivalent there. Um, here's another one which has been in the product for ever and I didn't know about it until I was being uh, teaching a Tableau class and Paul Soshin was uh, auditing and he said did you know you could do this? And I didn't. So let me um, build a heat map. Uh, I'll take sales and profit and region and product category 
and product subcategory and hope that Tableau gets the thing right. Uh, it does a good job. And yeah, I want a heat map. And you can see my chart isn't wide enough, so uh, good instructional design, get people using the thing they just learned again, so I'll do control right arrow and make the chart wider. What has happened is that it's sizing by sum of profit and it's coloring by sum of sales. Uh, I want the reverse. I want the size to be based on how big the sales was and the color um, to be based on uh, uh, how profitable something is. And for years, and I mean years, I would, okay, let me drag this over here, put this on this thing, let me drag the other thing over here. In Tableau, you can select any two pills, right-click one of them, and swap. And it works with any two pills. So I'm not saying this is a great idea, but if I wanted to do this, I could right-click uh, these two items and swap them. You get kind of some interesting chart types when you do that. Um, the, uh, this is kind of a superset of what um, Sean was showing, which I didn't know existed, which is the um, swap the reference lines. Uh, you can swap any two fields. Also, I do hope um, that um, people are uh, recoiling in horror at the thought of using uh, green and red without an affordance. Uh, anyone who has red-green color blindness, which is roughly 7% of the American male population, they're not going to be able to distinguish this. So I hope you'll use something like this instead. Um, here's one where I'm feeling particularly um, stupid, which is I've known about it, I just keep forgetting to use it. Um, I will have worksheets that uh, kind of have similar things in them, and then late in the game I decide I want a particular look and feel to this. So I've been building lots of worksheets that look like this, and then you know I've got seven or eight of them, each showing here I'm showing sales, um, percent of sales by customer, here I'm showing percent of sales by product name, the client wants me to put the N count in parentheses, etc. And I now have a whole bunch of sheets like this that I need to make look like this. And a student recently asked, is there a way to do this? And I went, yeah, there is. And why don't I use it more often? Uh, I can right click and I can just simply say copy the formatting. So I'm right clicking on the sheet tab. Then I'm going to this sheet and I'm saying paste the formatting. And it's lovely. So a huge amount of time and effort saved as we you know, wait for something like style sheets to uh, or functional equivalent to make it into Tableau. Um, that copy and pasting of some aspects of a sheet, let me show you another variation of that. So I've got this heat map here. Um, when I'm dealing with table calculations, and I told people that no table calculations or level of detail expressions would be allowed into the venue, so we will not be dealing with them. Um, but I'll often end up creating a text table or a, um, a, a cross tab, whatever it is you may call it, um, just to figure out what have I got going on or, or vet all my calculations. Is this working? Is the way I'm computing the profit ratio, working, et cetera. So I might right click this and say, you know what, let me duplicate the sheet as a cross tab. So I can see what are all the pieces that are making this up, are the formulas correct, are my assumptions correct, et cetera. Um, um, the, I would um, not, um, uh, I would never you know, publish this as a visualization. This is just something to help me understand what's going on. So if this isn't quite up to snuff, I might render it uh, as this. Um, here's a, another one that uh, I enjoy quite a bit. Um, and that is just because um, measures by default want to be continuous doesn't mean they have to be continuous. Um, and very often with the stuff I'm doing, you might have uh, saw it here um, where I want to see, um, have a something which is normally lives as continuous because it's a measure, 
count the number of, uh, of distinct orders. Um, I'd like to do that here. I'd like to know how many distinct furniture, office supply, and technology orders. And I happen to have a formula that does this, uh, distinct count of order ID. You know, I can, you know, I'm really getting off on that, uh, Sean, the, uh, making this larger and smaller. Thanks for reminding me of that, as I had forgotten it. Um, in any case, uh, you know, I'll drag this up here, and Tableau thinks I want to handle this as a continuous item. And it's going to make a scatter plot because it's trying to show numbers against numbers. So I'll right click on this and make it discrete. And then I can put it back to where I wanted it, which is over here. And it's three or four steps that are involved with this. Well, I can just change Tableau's default behavior by right clicking on the field um, and changing this convert it to discrete. It's a little hard to see here. Um, but it is, in fact, now a blue pill instead of a green pill. And now I can drag it up here. Oops. And it will behave just the way that I want it to. Or I could have two versions of it, make a copy of the field, make one of them discrete, one of them continuous. So just nice um, time savers. Speaking of time savers and, and uh, things that um, I definitely, this this is one of the major, how did I not know this was in the product? And I was relieved that it only kind of uh, appeared under the radar in, uh, I think, Tableau 8. I thought this is one of those things that's been around forever, and I just didn't know it existed. Um, I've got a, all this data. This is a Superstore version of, of uh, excuse me, international version of Superstore sales. And I don't want to show people the international. I don't want that in the view. Great, take it out. I don't want it in the quick filter either. I don't want them turning on and off this item um, at all. So how can I just get rid of it? Well, we could have easily, when we created the extract, or we could have said, don't include this region. Or we could make an extract of the extract and say, don't include this. But let's say I'm kind of stuck with this. Uh, the way I've battled with this in the past is, um, this is not a bad tip and trick in itself. I'll make a copy of this, put that in here, indicate that I don't want to include international. But here, very important, I've got to make sure that uh, uh, I'm only showing the relevant values in the database. Um, a lot of overhead, a lot of extra work to handle this. The other way I could handle this is I can um, right click on the data source and I can go to edit data source filter. So this is not something which is going to show up here. Kind of, um, this even trumps and, and Sean and Peter and other people, you know, uh, Mark Jackson that are in. I think this is trumps even context filters. This kind of tells Tableau, don't even bother with this stuff at all. Just don't even bring it into play or think about it. So I can add a data source filter, go to region, and indicate I don't want international. And it's, there's, there's nothing in the UI that suggests this is in place. This is not what's being um, uh, affected over here. I'm going to a very low level of this thing and, and telling Tableau, when you're bringing in data in your initial query, don't even bother to bring this stuff in. Um, I have found this to be particularly useful with um, uh, dealing with data blends. And when, gee, I need to filter a secondary uh, data source, but I can't just drag a pill in. But I just know I don't want to include any of this extraneous data and having the uh, data source filters um, is enormously useful. Um, let me go to um, abbreviating dates. Um, the uh, times that you, we may have this very narrow chart, and I want to show um, all 12 months, but uh, I've got a continuous date over here at the moment. Um, and uh, gee, I just want to format this so it just says um, uh, J, F, um, and I'm only looking at one year of data. So I can um, uh, 
go to the format for this and just change the format to a custom format of, who knew this, M, 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 M. The fifth M gives you, it's just giving you the one letter. By the way, if this were um, date parts versus continuous dates, the, uh, um, the option to do an abbreviation would be there. But because it's continuous, it's, excuse me, because it's date value. Um, Joshua, if you're listening, I'm trying to get it right. It's not continuous versus discrete. It's really date values versus date parts. Cool tip and trick right there. Speaking of which, I think Joshua discovered this. Uh, if I double click in here, I can see, hey, this is how it is. This is actually the, the, the function, the formula that's behind the scenes. Um, because we're using date values, we're, um, we're going to have the equivalent of that as date trunk. And we're kind of saying round this off to the nearest month um, uh, using the date trunk function. If, this, in fact, had been a date part, I would have seen a, a different animal here when I double clicked. So uh, I think that's uh, pretty marvelous. Uh, last item I've got on my agenda, unless I've missed something, is a quick and dirty way to see the universe of, of uh, values for a measure. So let's say I'd like to know, without changing the viz or doing anything, um, I'd like to know what the average um, uh, shipping cost is uh, for each of these items. So I'm going to um, right drag um, shipping cost and I'm going to put it on size. I'm right dragging so I can um, override Tableau's default behavior and say I want the average shipping cost. But since we were talk talking about continuous and discrete and part first value, uh, let me change this and make this discrete. And this is the universe of, of possible uh, uh, shipping costs for the data that's in play. So I can say, oh, you know, I'm kind of going down, you know, from about a dollar up to almost $58. And you can put it on the uh, um, color legend as well. Just something that you use to give you uh, a sense of what are all the possible values associated with the measure. And I think that's everything on my list. Hey, Steve, we had a couple of questions that came in. One was uh, from Paul Chapman. He, when you were doing the copying of the formatting, uh, he asked, he said, that seems to apply to fonts, but is there any way or any tips for coloring, co uh, for copying colors between, uh, between different views as well? Oh, oh, it did. You know, it didn't just get the fonts. It got the, you know, the, I don't know if you can see it as well, but I started with, you know, my color originally was, you know, the, the, uh, was, you know, whatever was the default Tableau blue. Um, and so it got all the fonts. It got the, the light gray background. It got the uh, very light white um, uh, uh, grid lines that are in here. So it copied everything. Uh, now, part of it was that I'm using, you know, certain field, you know, similar fields. Um, if I had um, um, certain things that were very different, it might not know exactly how to handle that aspect of it, but it 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 got everything. So, uh, well, there's one other question from Matt Francis, and is wondering if the tooltips also copied the formatting for the tooltips. Um, don't know. I'm gonna see. Uh, uh, what a cool. Hold on. Shall we, shall we try that? Yeah. Yeah. We have we have plenty of time. So okay. okay. So um, uh, let's see. So I've got my. You know, here is my unformatted version of this thing. So let me create a tooltip, and you know, let's just go hog wild here, and you know, choose some really inappropriate, ugly font that's unreadable, which is certainly what I strive to do, and make it bold and make it such and such different color. Well, let's make that obviously a different color. Oh, and let's see if it. Uh, I'd be very surprised if it gets this. All right. And let's copy the formatting. Matt, then I'm, I'm kind of tingling with anticipation here. Um, notice as I hover over this, I'm seeing the old formatting. So let's do the paste formatting. And let's do a tooltip. And it is not copying the tooltip formatting. 
Okay, so that's good to know. Did you hear that, you know, collective groan from over 120 people of disappointment? <laughs> Well, that's the that's that's why we do things live. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's very great. very very cool idea to try. Thanks for for asking about that. Yeah. Um, so I don't see any other. Oh, there was a question that uh, that I saw that Mark I think put up uh, that Mark piece uh, that um, most of the tips we've seen this morning have to do with uh, have to do with desktop. Are um, are any of these tips things that that were I guess. Uh, most of them are just that specific. You know, what about server, and how does this relate to server? And um, and uh, certainly some of them would be useful in server. And I know that the the product is becoming more and more on the server side, and the edit mode is becoming more uh, more like desktop. But uh, just curious, if any thoughts as it relates to using these tips that we learned this morning for server? I would say I would can count on one hand the number of times that I have done any editing um, on server. I'm just so not in the habit of doing that. Um, I, I don't know about Peter and Sean and anybody else out there. So I can't say, you know, about shortcut keys or, you know, certain things, certainly things like the abbreviation of uh, the five capital M's uh, should work. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I think I've edited once on server. <laughs> Same here. I don't really use it, so I couldn't really comment. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, a lot of the stuff we showed is definitely you know, development type stuff, so would have no impact on the end result for the people interacting with dashboards on server. Um, but for the server editor, yeah, I'm not really sure. And let's see, there's another question that came in. It said, uh, from Kathy Bridges, it says, do you have a quick and dirty tip for showing hiding all mark labels in a series? Say you're doing a line chart by month with this year versus last year, but you only want to label this year. I've had to select each mark one by one to hide the last year. Go ahead, Sean. Yeah, I don't quite understand the question. Uh, sure, it's not sure, but you only want to show the. Okay, so uh, I, I, I think here. Let me see if this is what uh, we're going for, which is the. Uh, uh, hold on, let me get order date. It's right in front of me, and uh, um, oh. Uh, by the way, what, by the way, that was a right drag that he just did, and that always brings up then the context or the the selection menu, it's really handy with dates. You, know, you got something that looks like this and it's, gosh, that's just a god-awful mess. I think this is the god-awful mess with which uh, referring, you know, I can certainly go to label and say, you know, let me just do the line ends. Uh, or I could say uh, line ends and just do me the, the end of the line. Um, the, these are things that you get for free. Um, if there's something where, gee, there's something in particular based on a calculation, um, uh, you could put, have, have two things on the label chart. I have a, I have a little trick that I think might answer the, the question, um, if I've understood the question correctly. Sometimes what I do is um, create a calculated field that will say if something equals whatever the thing you want the label is, then, and then the dimensional measure, L, like, you know, quote marks, space, quote marks, so you see nothing, or even just two quote marks, so you see it blank, and then you add that to your label shell. Um, yeah. So you effectively get only the labeling won't meet the criteria that you want. So if in your right, case, if, if, if for some reason we... Yeah. It's doing the line ends, but if I really wanted to do May 2013 um, yeah, as the true. item, you could say, you know, uh, if um, you know, the, the, the order, you know, it's May of 2013, then sum of sales. Um, um, but otherwise, I think I don't think you even need to do the. Um, or, yeah, you or, probably don't need the help. Yeah. Or, yeah. or it, it, if you don't even want to have that, or if you just want something which says, oh, here, reference point in, uh, I don't think you even need the else. But yeah. a fine, fine way to do it. Hey, can you, can you pass the, uh, the screen share to Mark? 
Jackson, he has okay. something he'd, he'd like to demonstrate. Sure. I'm going to make you a panel mark. And I, I'm not sure if you're on. Uh, there we go. Change the presenter. So Mark Jackson is another one of our Zen masters and a presenter uh, of a couple different Think Data Thursdays, as I recall. And um, oh, Mark is saying he doesn't think he has a mic. Oh, oh. okay. <laughs> so to, to get to what when his mimes question, do tableau, <laughs> yeah, no problem. Uh, so um, what he did ask for is, can someone show the shift drag trip on dash trick on dashboards to toggle floating versus tiled? So we want to take that one. Yeah, Peter, I think you showed that, did you not? Yes. Um, well, I don't know if Mark has something additional. <clears throat> yeah, so Mark, is there something else besides the sit drag trick on um, uh, that? Um, up. Yeah, Peter. Peter showed it, and I didn't know about it, and it's incredibly cool. Yeah, uh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> so I knew Peter needed to leave early, um, and uh, it's 8.50, a little bit past 8.50 right now. Um, it looks like our questions, I'm going to go back to the question panel real quick one, one more time, see if there's anything else I saw there. Um, okay, I don't see any new questions, so with that, I think we'll call it, call it good, and I really want to thank everyone for for coming to the Think Data Thursday. This is a, this is a, a wonderful Think Data Thursday to uh, go and check out again later in our uh, video library and, and watch again, um, and then to share with other people. Uh, so you can share the link uh, for that. And I'll just go ahead and, and show where this is located. I'll make myself presenter for a moment. And Here we go. When you know I'm not logged in yet, I'll do that real quick. By the way, my, my name is uh, Patrick Vanderheide, and I'm here in the community forums. I realize when I log into the uh, Think Data Thursdays, I log in as a Tableau account, so sometimes people don't know who I am. Uh, but I'm uh, in the community forums, and you can reach me uh, and the rest of our community team at the community at tableau.com alias. Um, so anyways, here's the Think Data Thursday uh, videos that from the historically, and I'll show you just how to find these if you come to the front page of the community and uh, go down to our down, down to our groups. And the Think Data Thursday group is right here. And off on the right-hand side, this is where we have uh, listings of all the Think Data Thursdays that are coming up and have happened. So you can get uh, go into each of these and, and get a link to the full screen version of the videos. Or if you'd like to see the complete list of videos, you can come over here to this video library and click on that. And this will bring you back to the screen with all the, the list of videos. And they're oldest at top to newest at the bottom. Um, so if you want to see the newest videos, they're, they're all the way down there. And, and uh, we've kept a number of them from uh, going all the way back to version 6 in here. Um, some of the ones that Joe did uh, quite a while back are in here as well. So uh, again, that's all I wanted to share there. And thank you to uh, Sean, Peter, and Steve, each of you for, for being uh, willing to do this today and, and jumping on and sharing these tips with everyone. And thanks to the rest of the Zen Masters for, uh, for the idea and for sharing your tips with, uh, with all of us to compile and, and share with the rest of the customers. So thank you, everyone.